Hi, I'm Richard Epcar, the voice of Handsome. You're watching Seawood Director Productions, and let me fill you with darkness. I think this is a new scene. Do my eyes deceive me? Does he really have the power to wield the Keyblade? He is nothing but a boy. Give him a chance. It means he's straight as an arrow. He's pure of heart. Unlike all of us here. He had better be. Or else he's worthless. I truly hope He's enjoying himself on his adventure. <laughs> Maybe he'd like a hand to determine his fate. Hey, as long as it works in our favor, we can let him do what he wants for now. Then we'll all jump in if needed. Those are bold words coming from you. Are you saying you'll volunteer to take care of it if things go wrong? Huh? What? M me? No, you have the wrong guy. I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> You act as though you have a conscience. When was the last time any one of us felt anything? Truer words were never spoken. Well, I suppose the fun will have to wait. Do you know what happens to those who lose their true purpose? Inevitably, they destroy themselves. Gentlemen. The hero of the Keyblade has embarked on a new adventure. Make sure it is one he will remember. Now go. Use the left stick to fly the gummy ship. Try approaching the door-shaped gummy route on the screen. When you arrive at the, your destination, press triangle to land. You can't land on worlds not connected by gummy routes. Clear gummy routes to, to, ah, to connect the worlds. So yeah, basically you go, basically um, these are your gummy ship sections. Um, unlike the first game, you only have to do them once, then you never have to do them again. Um, originally in the first um, in the first game, until you got the warp drive, you had to go through gummy roots um, every time you wanted to go to a new world. In this one, they don't force you into that. Um, so yeah, just have to do them once. We are going to do our first two gummy ship missions. Um, we're going to do both because I don't know which one of these worlds has the lower battle level, and I would prefer to do the lower battle level world first. So let's just start with Asteroid Sweep. <laughs> so the gummy missions work a bit differently in this game than they did in Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, in Kingdom Hearts 1, they were a lot closer to Star Fox in that, in just the way they were controlled. But here, um, they're a lot faster paced. Um, it feels more like, I don't know, it, it feels a bit more arcadey. Oh, I'm not really sure what to compare it to. Maybe Sin and Punishment is probably the first thing that I would think to compare it to. But that's probably wrong. Um, granted, I've never actually played that, but it just looks like it would play similar to this. But I feel like you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about um, when we start. And yes, every single gummy ship level starts like that. <laughs> This is weird. All right, let's do this. Go 
Gummy Battle Tips. Basic controls. Use the left stick to turn the gummy ship and press X to fire. So they're pretty simple. No duh. Ship. So yeah, basically, this is what it's like, um, you just want to mash the X button as much as possible and just generally kind of aim in the direction of stuff. And I'll randomly turn you like that to, you know, hit stuff that's on the side. Um, these are typically easier than, um, the gamma ship levels in the first game. They usually aren't that hard, and you probably won't fail on a lot of them if you play the game. Um, that was a red one, um, and if you saw it gave me an item, um, I think it was a gummy piece, and you can actually still customize your own gummy ship in this game, although since you won't be using it as much as you did in the first one really, um, there's not a whole lot of a reason to customize it. Especially since they give you blueprints for um, new gummy ships. But I think you can still customize your own one if you want to. Yeah, if you're paying attention, like these are actually nobodies that we're shooting. Um, they got a little nobody symbol on them. Which I don't know, I think it's kind of neat. Because, like, in the first game, like, you were typically actually shooting the Heartless when you were shooting your gummy ship. Um, they may have looked like, you know, little enemy ships, but they actually were heartless, so... <clears throat> I don't know, I think it's kind of neat. Like, there's different, like, little missions that you can do with these. And I mean, if you want to, you can do them, um, but I probably won't. But, um, I, I've never done, like, little, little optional missions. So I've just never cared to. These sections aren't bad, but they aren't the best part of the game by any means, and they aren't really something that I ever come back to. I just do them mainly because I have to. I think we're almost done here. I think this is like the last little stress to show this map. Map, I mean... Is it really a map? No, it's more of a level. See? There's the end. You just go through this big old keyhole. And the route has been opened. And you see we opened two le um, mission levels. And we obtained a blueprint. In fact, we obtained multiple blueprints. And we got medals, and there's a score and stuff, and as you can see, it's a bit more arcadey with the way that it's handled. Overall, the mission the coming missions aren't that bad, but they aren't something too amazing. But we just opened the route to a new level, and you might be able to guess what it is. Um it is called the Land of Dragons, and it is based off Mulan. But here we are going to um, do a, the um, other gummy ship route oh, mission level thing called Stardust Sweep. This will open up a um, route to another level. All right, start. You see here we got here are the two that we got. Here's High Wind level one. You know, it's an upgraded version. And then here is the Falcon level one. Let's, um, let's try out the Falcon. Start. Alright, this is telling us about our HP gauge. Pretty self-explanatory, you know, go. just don't let it hit zero. 
All right. Here we go. So yeah, this is very much the same as the last one. I have to shoot up all the different nobody ones. Um, I just noticed that if you press circle, you actually do a barrel roll. Well, actually, it's a technically an aileron roll, but nobody really cares what it's actually called. I mean, Star Fox calls it a barrel roll, so everyone else calls it a barrel roll. Actually, it flows fairly well. I don't know. It's, it's kind of like, like... The flow is similar to a dodge roll in main combat and like the previous games. So it flows decently, but not the best in the world. Yeah, these levels are pretty simple. In fact, I I don't remember a lot of them giving me a whole lot of trouble, except for maybe the last one. Um, which, I mean... It's, it's, it's pretty... Pretty crazy, like how tense like this gets like at the end. Oh, that one was actually a heartless. That one, that one that we just blew up was actually a heartless, not a nobody. Huh. Like as you'll see, like I mean, the heartless still are a problem. They still are really very much a threat in this game. I mean, about as much as they were in the last one. Um, you still have your shadows, your knights, but you also have quite a few new variations. And you actually get to learn more about the creation of the Heartless and in this one. Um, at least to a small extent. Like, you get to learn more. Like, you get to learn more about, like, you know, how some of them are created, because, I mean, you, of course, like, have, like, your Shadow Heartless and your Neo Shadows and, you know, the ones that, you know, are very much, you know, like, basically like your Neo Shadows and your, um, Shadows and Dark Sides and all those, um, kind. But then you also have, like, the ones that actually have- Oh, my! They get hit- So, so like, a ton of them were coming at me. But, um, gosh, I'm paying for everybody to explain this. Basically, there are Heartless that have, um, little emblem on them and those that don't. Um, an example of one that has an emblem and one that doesn't have an emblem. Is, um, the shadows do not have emblems, but then the large bodies do have emblems. And they kind of explain how, what the difference is between them, I think, in this one. Um, and what creates, and, and you know, how a number one is created as opposed to how a normal one is created. Um, so yeah, we got more blue perks here. Um, and I think that's it. Probably, it's probably only explained in like one of the report things, but still.